In this video, we're going to look at 35 quick fire tinker CAD tips to speed up your workflow and improve your designs. Let's dive right in. So when starting designs, there are a few things that we like to do in the setup phase. Firstly, renaming your design to something descriptive makes it much easier to find later in your library. And if we're 3D printing the design, adjusting the work plane size to match your printer's build plate can be super helpful. Not only does it show you how much will fit in a single print, but if you print often, it can also help you to visualize the real world scale of your design much more accurately. Finally, setting the snap grid to a suitable value based on your design type can make adjustments much easier. So for organic modeling, a lower value like 0.1 millimeters allows for finer control. While for boxy designs, you might go for a higher value that snaps movements to a grid of common increments like one millimeter. Okay, moving on to some tips for working with basic shapes. When setting the length and width of shapes using the dimensions fields, you can use the tab key to quickly switch between them instead of clicking each box manually. Also, when entering dimensions this way, make sure you select the correct handle first. For example, if you select a right corner handle and enter a length, Tinkercad will stretch the shape to the right while keeping the left side fixed. Some shapes have editable parameters, like the radius slider on the box shape that allows you to round the edges. And if you're using these, set your dimensions within the shape menu and not in the workspace. Otherwise, parameters can break and shapes become distorted. While we're on the topic of rounding edges, which are also known as fillets, there may be cases where using the box shape and parameters don't work for your specific design. In that case, you can use the pre-made meta fillet from the shape generator library. Simply edit the radius, set the height, and merge it into your design. Fillets are important for both aesthetics and function, so don't forget to favorite this tool and any others that you use often for quick access anytime. You'll also notice the Your Creation section, which works similarly to favoriting, but instead of saving pre-made shapes, it lets you store your own custom shapes for easy reuse. So now onto some tips for movement and positioning. Tinkercad's new cruise feature is great for stacking shapes, and you can actually change the cruising face by setting the work plane on the desired face, activating cruise, and selecting the new handle. If it selects the wrong side like you see here, simply place the work plane again, but this time holding shift to reverse it. You might know that if you press an arrow key with an object selected, it'll move in increments based on what your snap grid is set to. But what's less commonly known is that holding shift while pressing an arrow key moves it by 10 times that value. And this is great for quick yet precise positioning. When using the align tool, you may want to keep one object fixed while aligning others to it. To do this, activate the align tool, click the object you want to keep stationary, then select the relevant alignment nodes as usual. But if you need to align faces flush against each other, the align tool alone won't do the job. So one method is to place the work plane on a target face, then select the other object and press D to drop it onto the work plane. You can then fine tune the positioning with the align tool if needed. Another way to align objects, especially straight edge models, is by using the snap grid. So for example, if the snap grid is set to one millimeter, the extent of selected objects will always snap to those grid lines. And this allows you to use them as common reference points for alignment. This removes the need for additional tools, but only works in certain scenarios. Okay, so Tinkercad has a range of tools that go beyond basic shapes, and here are a few interesting ones. The new sketch tool is a game changer in so many ways, especially when creating organic forms. When you're sketching out your curves, a good tip is to keep the points to a minimum, and this will create much smoother transitions. You can also quickly switch between straight lines and curves using keyboard shortcuts. Press one for straight lines and two for curves, instead of clicking the tools each time. And don't forget, you can combine the sketch tool with the smart duplicate feature to quickly generate complex geometries with minimal effort. In addition to exporting models, you can also import them into Tinkercad. This might be from Tinkercad's community gallery, 
or you can bring in other file formats like SVGs and STLs. So imported models can be useful in many different ways. You can modify existing designs, add details to your projects, or use them as guides and references to design custom objects around a use that is often overlooked. While we're on the topic of importing and exporting, you can take things a step further by sending models from Tinkercad directly over to Autodesk Fusion for advanced editing. Even if you're not familiar with Fusion, it's super easy to add simple features like fillets and chamfers that can really enhance your designs. Next up, let's take a look at some tips for working with intricate models that have connecting parts. A couple simple ones to start with. If you're unsure about a design change, duplicate the object first. This lets you compare options side by side before committing. And if you need a close look at how shapes interact but you can't see inside, switch outer objects to transparent mode to make them visible. To make changes to the inner sections, you can temporarily hide outer sections and bring them back after editing. When positioning or scaling shapes relative to others, switch to an orthographic view and select a side on the view cube to see your design in 2D. And what this does is it provides you with a clearer view, it helps you spot misalignments and it removes perspective distortion. There may also be times when you need to scale objects from the center. To do this, hold Alt and Shift while scaling. Dragging a corner handle scales from the object's center on the work plane, while dragging the top handle scales from the center of its entire volume. Finally, designing connecting parts in their final position can sometimes make positioning and visualization tricky. So instead, consider designing sections separately first and then assembling them into the main design. And remember, the group tool can be used to temporarily merge shapes for alignment they can then be ungrouped once they're positioned correctly. Although Tinkercad doesn't have dedicated rendering tools for realistic visuals, there are still some techniques you can use to create presentational images. Let's break some of those down. First, create a copy of your final design solely for presentation purposes. Then consider the message you want to convey and build your scene with contextual objects and backgrounds. To save time, focus only on what will be visible in the final composition. You probably don't want the blue grid in your final presentation images, so switch off the work plane and adjust the background color to match your desired visual style. For both background and object colors, consider using a color palette generator to find complementary shades. You can then copy and paste the hex codes into Tinkercad's custom colors menu for a more polished look. Once you're happy with your scene, set your view and use the download image function to generate a PNG file. For more advanced visualization, try sending your model to Fusion, where you can add materials, lighting, and other effects to create more realistic renderings. Okay, the final group of tips focuses on designs for 3D printing. Before designing connecting parts, make sure you understand your 3D printer's tolerances. This helps you to set the right clearances for a loose or tight fit. And you can either download pre-made tolerance testers or create your own by designing holes and pegs with different gap sizes. Sometimes you may need to split models to fit on your print bed. To do this, use a hole shape as a split plane and create duplicates of both the hole and the object. Then group one hole with one object, stretch the hole to the opposite side and group the remaining hole and object to complete the split. And if you're printing large objects for aesthetic purposes only, consider hollowing them to save time and material. For simple shapes, create a hole duplicate and use the Alt plus Shift scale trick to shrink it from the center. Then, stretch the base down through the solid shape before grouping. For more complex shapes, you may need to take a more creative approach when designing the bottom section. Finally, check for thin walls that might not be 3D printable. As a rule of thumb, wall thicknesses should be at least twice your 3D printer's nozzle diameter, and this is typically 0.8 millimeters. Instead of manually checking every shape, create a 0.8 millimeter thick reference wall and drag it around your model to quickly spot any areas that may need adjustment. So the last tip's an important one, 
find the workflows, shortcuts, and design style that works best for you. Every designer approaches things differently, and in most cases, there's more than one way to achieve the same result. We hope you enjoyed these tips. Let us know what you think in the comments, and if you're interested in more tutorials, courses, and even certifications in 3D CAD and 3D printing, check out our online learning platform at weareprintlab.com. Thanks for watching.